Ah, The Polar Express. By far one of my most favorite holiday movies to watch during Christmas. It's a simple story about a magical train that takes kids on a journey across the world to see Father Christmas. It's a very basic premise, but at its heart, it's so much more than that. Once you get over some of the um, visuals, The Polar Express becomes a movie on hope, joy, and exploding steam engines. Let's go! Spontaneous flames, flying metal, instant death! But why? Why would you make such a dark video on a classic Christmas movie about Santa and kids? Well, first off, because I can. And second off, well, the, the last video I did in the Polo Express might have been a little tiny bit completely and ultimately wrong. Which you can watch by clicking here. Now, I'm sure at least one of you out there are wondering how the Polar Express would look like when it explodes. And honestly, I'm glad you asked. Now I understand that the Polar Express is a magical train, but for this video, we'll be looking at it as a magical train that also happens to operate like a real life steam locomotive. Looking at this diagram, a steam locomotive looks like an overly complicated mesh of tubes and steel. However, if we break it down to its core, it's honestly really easy to understand. Fuel is either injected or thrown into the firebox where it creates heat. That heat is transferred through these tubes in the boiler to heat the water. The water then starts to boil, creating steam that rises up and gathers at this dome right here. Once enough steam builds, the engineer can pull back the throttle, piping the steam through the regulator where it then goes through a set of pistons powering the locomotive. Basically speaking, train move when water get hot. So yeah, on the surface level, a steam locomotive is pretty straightforward. A boiler explosion, however, is a bit more complicated than that. In a steam locomotive, the top upper part of the firebox is called the crown sheet. The crown sheet is a layer of steel that separates the fire in the firebox from the steam in the boiler. This firebox alone can reach temperatures of up to 2500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,371 degrees Celsius, with the crown sheet getting even hotter. Mind you, 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,371 degrees Celsius is plenty enough to start weakening steel. This is why in almost all steam locomotive diagrams, you will always see water sitting just slightly above the top of the firebox. This is an absolutely crucial detail to any steam locomotive. The water acts like an ice pack, covering the firebox on nearly every side, keeping it cool and within operating range. However, if the water gets too low, the exposed parts of the firebox are subjected to the full force of the fire, quickly heating up the steel. There are a few things that can happen at this point, with the most common one being a controlled failure of the crown sheet. Most newer steam locomotives have safety features built into their fireboxes to protect them from this sort of thing. If the top of the firebox gets too hot, specially built plugs in the crown sheet will melt well before the crown sheet does, allowing only a small portion of the sheet to fail instead of the entire thing. Even though this does launch blistering hot steam into the cabin, subsequently scorching all the engine crew, it plays a crucial role in preventing the crown sheet from getting too hot and thus causing a boiler explosion. However, the title of this video is why the Polo Express would explode, not why the Polo Express would, you know, leak out steam and burn people slightly. Because of that, we'll just take this information and just slowly just kind of push it off to the side and just kind of forget that we ever even talked about it, okay? Just no talk. The next most common thing that happened is a boiler explosion. Now, a boiler explosion can potentially happen with both older steam locomotives built without protective plugs, as well as newer steam locomotives built with protective plugs. These protective plugs do a really good job at preventing a boiler explosion from happening when they work. 
If improper maintenance is done on the boiler, scaling, which is an accumulation of mineral deposits found in water, can lock down the crown sheet in place long after the plugs have melted away, something that has happened multiple times in the past. At this point, there is one last saving grace. If the locomotive crew is quick enough to realize that the crown sheet is no longer covered by water, they can very quickly kill the fire and prevent any kind of major disaster from happening. However, the one thing, and I mean the absolute one thing the crew definitely does not want to do in any circumstances is to add more water to the boiler. Because if they do, all hell breaks loose. Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. What does any of this have to do with the Polar Express exploding? It never was implied that the locomotive was running low on water, nor did they ever have to add additional water due to some unknown reason. You remember that scene where the Polar Express starts going down the hill while the main character kid and homeless guy are skiing down it? Yeah, that scene would be the last moment of not only the engine crew and all the main characters, but also probably every single other person on board. To understand why, we have to look at a real-life accident that actually happened at Bitterfield Station in Germany. On November 27, 1997, German locomotive 05516 was running late. The engine crew didn't have time to stop for water, and because of that, the water level in the boiler fell well below the crown sheet for an extended period of time. However, due to poor maintenance, scaling formed on the plugs of the firebox, preventing the crown sheet from buckling. When the locomotive came to a stop, all the water still left in the boiler sloshed to the front and then to the back, where it made contact with the burning firebox. The water evaporated instantly, blowing apart the crown sheet and completely destroying the locomotive in the process. This would happen to the Polar Express, but on a much, much worse scale. As the Polar Express goes down the hill, all the water flows forward to the front of the boiler, to reiterate, this is not some of the water, this is all of the water, like tilting a half-filled water bottle vertically. Not only does the crown sheet get to feel the burn, but now the entire firebox is subjected to the full-blown heat of the fire. In my last Polar Express video, I said basically the same thing, but back then, I used a roller coaster scene in the movie, which at max left the firebox uncovered for maybe about 5 seconds. By contrast, the skiing scene in the movie has the firebox exposed for about 50 seconds. If you don't think that's long, kids, try jumping into a flame for 50 seconds and tell me how that goes. <laughs> I, can't, can't, I can't put that in the video, oh my god. As the locomotive evens out, all the water that was at the front of the boiler slides back towards the firebox, causing a ginormous explosion, leveling everything in its wake. Hearing all this information from me is pretty cool and all, but do you know what would make this event even better? If it was classy. Maestro, if you please. As the Hobo and Hero Kids see the Polo Express climbing the hill, they start sliding backwards and quickly catch themselves on the exposed handrail, bracing for the rough ride ahead. Inside the boiler, the water is forced to the back, where it fully submerges the firebox. Then, as the locomotive crests the top of the hill, the entire train is suddenly yanked forward as the Hobo flings the Hero Kid onto his shoulders before starting the perilous plunge toward the base of the train. At the same time, the quick change in pitch launches all the water to the front of the boiler, fully exposing the firebox to the intense heat. The firebox then starts heating up quickly, evaporating any leftover water residue in seconds. After about 15 seconds, the crown sheet and firebox start to weaken as the temperature levels rise to a dangerous amount. Plugs in the crown sheet then start melting away from the sheer heat. However, due to some unknown reason, they failed to release the crown sheet from the rest of the boiler, locking it in place. 30 seconds in, the Hobo and Hero Kid now are about halfway down the train as the top of the Polar Express comes into their view. Meanwhile, inside the boiler, almost all the plugs have now melted away from the heat of the fire, leaving only a deformed mesh of glowing steel behind. 
At 45 seconds, the hobo disappears from view and the hero boy jumps for his life. However, before the hero boy reaches the tender, the Polar Express evens out on a flat grade, forcing all the water back to the red hot firebox. On contact, the water instantly vaporizes to steam, ripping apart the locomotive tracks and anything else within 50 feet. Still traveling at full speed, the passenger cars barrel off the broken track, slamming into anything in their path. Finally, as the dust clears, the last of the kids stumble out into the frozen tundra, as they one by one fall into an infinite slumber, never to work again. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you all so very much for watching. This video took me so incredibly long. And just for clarification, I do like this movie. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies out there I've ever watched. But uh, I just thought this was kind of a funny bit to do, kind of funny video to do on Christmas time. It is, a, it is a little past Christmas time, I do understand that. But anyways, you know, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more, then make sure to subscribe, like, and maybe share it to your friends. Because I definitely want to do more of this. It's fun, it's entertaining, and yeah. Anyways, hope you see you later.